uh, yeah, I'm hanging out, uh, waiting for Walgreens to open. Uh, I gotta get the, deter- I'm gonna do laundry in a minute. I gotta get some detergent. Um, so, a couple days ago, I fixed the, uh, I fixed the, my car. Um, I had to fix the, the fender. And this thing. So, this thing was missing. On Chrysler's, this, this, uh, this part of your car, uh, they, people lose them. I don't know where you, yeah, if, if you, uh, I don't know how it happens. They didn't say how it happens, but Chrysler doesn't sell these. This piece right here, you, you can't buy it online. <clears throat> you can't, you can't get it anywhere. So, you have to buy, if you get a Chrysler, you have to buy this, uh, uh, you can't buy these online and if you do you have to get this entire piece if you want this piece right here so on these Chrysler's I uh, I, I found one on Amazon and I uh, I got a new piece to fit right here and then uh, over here this uh, this bumper was missing a bracket uh, so it, it kind of stuck out right here so I had to go and buy that piece and replace it, and I did that. So I, I fixed this piece and replaced it. And then I, uh, I also had to, I also have to get the, uh, the, the, the guy at the at the place, uh, the dealership that I went to yesterday to uh, get my heater checked out. He told me that. Uh, because it's been nine months since I bought this car that he could not replace it. It was a uh, Watertown Kaiser <clears throat> uh, He said that he would not replace the uh, replace the heater in the vehicle um, uh, Because it's been so long <clears throat> and it cost fifteen hundred dollars to do so he, he then told me to sell the car to CarMax or or Carvana or Cars.com or Carvana and tell them that there's nothing wrong with the car. That that that's what he told me to do. He told me to tell them nothing's wrong with your vehicle and just sell it to uh, sell it to tell it to them because you don't have to tell and tell them there's anything wrong with the car. They're just gonna get in it, look at it, and. Uh, and tell you uh, and offer a price to you, but I know from I, I probably I, I know that uh, if they find out later that the heater doesn't work in the car, they're gonna probably give me the car back <clears throat> and ask for their money back. If they find out that the lights, the fog lights don't work, they're probably going to uh, call me and tell me that you didn't tell us there was electrical problems in the vehicle and uh we want our money back so i'm I'm positive that this guy was uh lying to me or giving me the worst kind of uh worst make the worst decision of your life because you're gonna they're gonna sue you for lying to them and give you your car back if they can right or sue you for some something probably for lying uh but uh yeah, so that's what he told me to do. He told me he wasn't going to fix the heat because it was 1500 bucks, And he sold me the car knowing... I believe he sold me the car knowing that the car was... Uh, the car was... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, knowing that the car was... Uh, uh, had he, uh, no heat in it. And it would cost him $1,500 to fix. To fix it. Uh, so I, I, I'm positive that he, he did that because, uh, he wanted me to, uh, he wanted me, he didn't want to pay for the cost of the vehicle and he, the heat worked well enough on a sunny day. I bought the car like 10 AM on a, on a Monday. And when I tested the heat out, it, it worked on the driver's side, right? So you, you imagine that the heater works if it works on the driver's side, it should work on the passenger side too. But it wasn't until like three months after I bought the car that I found out the heater on the passenger side did not work. And that's something that they, on these Chrysler, if a dealership buys a Chrysler 200 at all, ever, 
they should know that uh, they should know that the the heaters and the Chrysler's uh, 200 don't work. Or after 60,000 miles, the heaters break down. And after 60,000 miles, the electric they have electrical problems. So when they do an inspection, these people should have checked to see if um, check to see if the car was. Uh, when they do an inspection, they should check to see if the car has any electrical problems or heater problems, because everyone knows those are the problems that Chrysler's have. Um, uh, so when I went up there to check to see, uh, when I asked them uh, what what he's going to do about it, he said, uh, uh, "It's too late. There's nothing I'm going to do because uh, it's been it's been a while." And he. Uh, he offered me eight thousand dollars for the car, but it was uh, uh fourteen. It, it cost me fourteen thousand. So uh, I told him uh, I'm okay. I'll I'll keep it. And then I asked him if he could have somebody look at it to see exactly what's wrong with the car. Uh, and he he told me he would. He told me that was okay. We'll figure that out. But I uh, I already know. I know the car. I googled. I know this car now has. Uh, I now know this car has. Uh, electrical problems and um what do you call it <clears throat> i'm sorry electrical problems and uh crap it uh heater core problems so i i uh i'm gonna get those two things fixed and uh hopefully this uh 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 oh the car will be good to go i'm sorry about that I'm trying to think it's really hard to deal with this tech what with uh all this technology somebody put in my body when i was a child I don't know which one of you rich gay dudes did that. They won't tell me. They're saying Bill Gates developed the technology uh, that you can develop technology that you can put in somebody's uh, body, like a cell phone. You can. The, uh, he invented a means to put cell phone technology inside people's bodies, uh, uh, and all he needed was willing parents to uh, allow them allow him to do it. And uh, that's what he's. Uh, <laughs> that's what. That's what these people are, are speaking to me and telling me that he did. And uh, they also use the technology. If you, if you have the more anal sex you have, the more you're in the gay community, the larger they'll grow your penis. So uh, with this technology. So I don't know. Bill Gates invented it, and a bunch of other rich, powerful gay dudes would sat at home somewhere, sat in the office, sat in there on their yachts or or um or separated by miles across the globe from each other using uh well no before they invented the technology they had to sit down and talk to each other so these guys got together and developed a way uh, developed a way to do it and then they did it they figured out a way to put communicate like uh speakers and bodies in people's bodies and uh figured out a way to grow people's penises and and they they encourage to encourage uh, the gay community to have uh, to have more sex with each other. So the more anal sex you have with dudes, the larger the guy's penis that has sex with you, the larger they'll grow your penis. And that's what these people are telling me. Uh, so they they're trying to get me to be gay and have sex with dudes so they'll grow my penis. But anyways, yeah yeah. So back to this car. Uh, yeah, so the guy that sold it to me was incredibly gay. He was gay as hell. And he, uh, he, he sold me a bad car because he wanted me to have a car that was, had problems. And he, they lied to me when they sold it to me, uh, because it was a sale, right? They probably got it at auction. They got it at an auction and then, uh, with the problems it had, and they dressed the car up. They dressed this car up to make it look like it was decent and didn't tell any didn't tell me anything about uh didn't tell me anything about that guy just got out of the car bent over and uh uh really quick and then he stood up when i pointed my camera in his direction i mean fully just see now he's not bending over the same way before i'm telling you he bent over all the way with his ass pointed directly at me uh but yeah so <laughs> and that's what I deal with every day. Everywhere I go, some guy is trying to bend over and point his ass at me, or like some gay proud dude is like walking around real tough and and, and like bragging about it, and then uh, acting like he's not doing anything.
and just keep keeps walking. But that's what these dudes, gay dudes, keep showing up and following me, and doing gay things to me everywhere I go. But uh, back to this car. Uh, yeah, so the the dude in Watertown uh, sold the car to me. Didn't tell me the problems it was having, and uh, I, I'm not really mad. Well, I'm kind of mad because uh, I bought a Chrysler from them like two weeks before that, and the Chrysler the same. It, was, it looks the same as this car. But that Chrysler had a uh, a bad motor, so I brought it back to him. I told him that the the motor loses RPM RPMs uh, while when it's going uphill. So if I'm driving like 80 miles an hour on the highway or 75 on the highway, and I'm going uphill, the car uh, loses RPMs, so it slows down. Basically saying it it'll, it will slow down on you no matter if you press the gas or not. So it's a torque motor, he said. The torque motor's bad, you gotta have it replaced. Uh, so he gave me a, another Chrysler, this Chrysler. And this Chrysler has the same kind of problems. It has a, uh, it has a, uh, it has a uh, bad heater. And the other Chrysler had a bad heater, but they dressed it up, right? So when I got in the car this time, instead of checking the passenger side, which I should've, the heater on the, on the driver's side was working. I should have checked both sides of the vehicle, but I didn't. I, I, I assumed that the driver's side heat was working and the passenger side heater was working. But then again, it was like 10 in the morning. I might have. There's, somebody's telling me that I did. Somebody's speaking to me. They won't show, tell me who they are. I, I don't know their voice, uh, recognize their voice. But uh, somebody's telling me that they, they you did check and the heater was working uh uh okay i think he's 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 saying that it was okay you checked both sides <clears throat> i don't remember but i don't think i did it because uh the heat was so cold and i checked it two months after i bought it on the passenger side that there's no way in the world i would have missed it if uh when i checked uh two months prior to buying it and i don't think the heat went out that quickly uh so yeah um, I'm pretty sure I did not check the uh, heater on the passenger side um, because I assumed it was working or I assumed since I just gave you guys a car that with no heater you wouldn't give me another car with no heater heater core with heater core issues <clears throat> and yeah they just handed it to me and said this is a better car we checked it we checked everything on it there are no issues when they gave me the car, the, the, the car battery had uh, was dead. It was like a low voltage on the car. Uh, so I had to switch the battery out. Um, so I had to switch the battery, what do you call it? Uh, buy a new battery. So I bought a new battery and uh, they told me that, well, yeah, and when you buy a car for $14,000, it should have a good battery in it. But um, dealerships don't do that. They don't switch the battery out because if you change the battery in the process uh, before the sale, you're gonna put a new battery in the car. There's gonna be a bunch of new problems. So the car for eight years has been living with this nearly dead battery. Well, well, from the moment the battery died, well, it was get, got low voltage. I don't know, like four or five years ago. Uh, the car has been living with a low voltage battery so all the wiring and the components or everything related to the battery has been used has gotten used to that low voltage so you put a new battery in it's like a it's like a it's like a, you're gonna affect you're going to affect the uh, the uh, the the rest of the car and I think that's what happened so as soon as I put a battery in this car a new one I started having electrical problems with the lights and um and I'm not 1000% positive about that but there's no other nothing else changed in the time since I bought the car uh, it just changed the battery and I started having other problems in the vehicle um but yeah so uh what else is there what else is going on <clears throat> You know, these people are trying to talk to me while I'm talking on Facebook Live. Uh, I think Taylor Swift just flashed her image in front of my eyes. I guess this technology, this technology is in, uh, is in a bunch of people who aren't, uh, who are either successful or rich or chose to be gay, like uh, undercover 
closeted gay celebrities uh, like Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson has this technology in his body. Uh, Taylor Swift has this technology in her body. Uh, Scarlett Johansson has this technology in her body. And they, these people have been talking to me for like the last three years using this, uh, this, this new body technology that somebody invented. Elon Musk is telling me that say, uh, say that it's kind of like the idea I had with the implants that, uh, uh, to control my cars. Uh, but yeah, so, but somebody before they released the technology to the public decided to try it out on certain people, like poor people, poor black people and anyone else who was willing to be gay, well, who wanted to be gay, you know, that's what they're telling me. They started with the, in the gay community with people who would have sex with their family members, people who have sex with the same sex and, uh, and grew up like that for years. And then these people had kids. So they started talking to those people, the people in the gay community and, uh, asking them if you guys are willing to allow us to try this technology out on your kids or even you. And it's like, it's like, why doesn't anybody know about this? Well, they, they, I think they decided to keep it a secret. Because if you keep it a secret, nobody can, nobody can report it. Like, the kids, your children, if they grow up and decide they don't want it, or they don't like it, they can't tell anybody. <clears throat> so if your children can't tell anybody, nobody would ever, that's, that's just wrong. So I turn around, and there's this guy walking out of Walgreens, shaking, like, swishing. You know, you know, uh gay dudes like to swish their butts uh everywhere they go like shake their butts as they walk and that's that's the type of things i see every day uh like these people are desperately trying to get me to be gay every, everywhere i go but anyways like i was saying so these people put technology in people's bodies um and to get the, them to be uh yeah, they're trying to tell me to go back to go back to that story. So instead of talking about that guy, they wanted me to go back to the story with the technology. Uh, <laughs> so, or or like this lady who just showed up. Um, these people like to flash their headlights in my peripheral vision, like peripheral. So when I'm looking in the opposite direction, they'll drive by, like right here, and uh, flash their. If they drove past this parking lot, they'll flash their freaking headlights at me and then keep driving and i'm almost positive these are the people who are in the gay community uh who are hostile towards me because uh i refuse to be gay or they're doing things to you know get aggravate people and get them to be violent like you hear on the news somebody being really violent for no reason uh attacking people doing mean things to people and i think those are the people that these people who are flashing their headlights forcing them or shaking their butts everywhere they men who show up and just uh bend over or shake their butts as they walk i think those are the people who get the like guys like people like me to act violently and uh those are, that's the issue i mean um and i think that's that's how that's what they're trying to do to me they're trying to they they've been doing this forever trying to get me to act violently and and never and uh never allowing me to report it to anybody like there are people harassing me or that there are people who are being gay uh, and doing criminal harassment, like criminal things to get someone to be gay. Uh, well, harassing them uh, until they're gay. I don't know, like using intimidation, uh, flashing headlights, your high beams at them on the car. I mean, on the when you're driving down the road, flash, turning the corner and flashing your high beams at somebody as you uh, drive past them to like you know blind basically they're telling me to say blind you while you're driving and that's what that lady or while you're walking down the street so that lady who drove past me in the green in the green car she uh flashed her high beams at me just to piss me off and and if i was driving she would probably do the same thing to like make it hard for you hard for me to drive but uh um yeah, I think Octavio, I guess somebody just flat he just flashed his image in front of my eyes. I don't know. Uh but I guess this technology is in a few people. And uh these uh people just uh these people uh <clears throat> uh use it to force people to be gay. And they're telling me that my Facebook live message isn't worth anything. They're telling me that 
my this uh this yeah this uh using Facebook Live isn't going to help you uh at all. And this woman just mouthed something and in my ear I heard somebody say, Shut up. So as she mouthed shut up, she didn't verbally say it, she just mouthed it. Uh mouthed it and then in my ear I heard somebody say, Shut up using the technology that Bill Gates invented. So it's like it's like they try to they, they're trying to antagonize me and make me uh, upset. Oh, and then at the same time they're electrocuting, like literally burning my penis with like electrical like electrical burn in the tip of my like around the area of my penis to piss me off like all the time. So everywhere I go at all times when I'm like at home right where I'm standing. Uh, at work, um, uh, would be while I'm uh, if I'm, unless I'm sleeping, I don't know it. Uh, but as soon as I wake up, they start burning my penis because they they want me to be gay or uh, somebody's telling me to if you put your penis and if you have sex with somebody, we'll stop burning your penis. And uh, uh, I just uh, uh, but they they make it hard, right? You can't just walk up to somebody and start having sex with them. And then these people who show up around me are, are know who I am, and they're trying to get me to like uh, either like sexually assault somebody, or force someone to have uh, or cheat. I don't know, cheat somehow because black people, ra racially speaking, they these people believe black people can't control themselves. And this is a white some white guy talking right now, telling me that I want you to say on your Facebook Live message that black people can't control themselves and uh and this is our this is the evidence of it as soon as we electrocute them or as soon as anybody does something to a black person they can't control what their actions anymore so uh these uh these people are uh uh they they're trying to see if if they can electrocute my genitals and encourage me to try to have sex with somebody by saying if you have sex with them we will stop harassing you anyone and uh uh but they're making it difficult right they make it incredibly difficult to have sex with somebody by uh telling people to not have sex with them so that we can find out if he's willing to rape you uh, and uh so you get you get how it works right you get what they're trying to do uh <sighs> And yeah, I guess I guess nobody, no one's ever gonna know because no one's ever gonna let someone tell these. I guess when they started this, like I don't know, 80, 80 years ago, or whenever they started this, they uh, they put people in places where people could tell, right? They they uh, put people in the police department or people without this technology, right? So everybody doesn't have the technology in their bodies, but. They put enough people in places who were gay, right? So let's say somebody grew up gay in the in 1950s or 1920s or whatever the case may be, or in the uh, 19, 1920s. I'm sorry, but like in the last 50 or 60 years, right? They put those people in places where people could tell, right? So you call somebody and tell them that you're hearing things, or you're hearing people talk to you like you're talking on the cell phone with them in your ears and you can't get whatever they're using out of your body those people could or could not have the technology in their body their bodies already or these are just people who are gay in the gay community already in position where people would call and ask ask them for help so like when you call the police department you ask them for help they usually say uh uh this called schizophrenia or you have a mental health disorder and when the police officer tells you you have a mental health disorder and you're black or or you're white but more commonly black um they say they say that's uh that's a that's an indication well most people know mental health people who are claimed to have mental health problems are usually on the news for uh like being murdered or murdering somebody right so it's like a a, a, a like a cop's opportunity to kill somebody for uh for uh uh for telling right it's like a gay community's way of telling you that we're gonna kill you or we could kill you or we could excuse this our uh like excuse our uh what do you call it excuse uh our act yeah any court 
if this ever ended up in the news or your death, excuse your death by calling you, uh, saying you have a mental health, they're making it incredibly difficult for me to tell you guys what I'm trying to say. This technology stops you from being able to think as well. So I'm really struggling trying to say what I want to say. But it, yeah, it complicated thoughts. They, they try to stop me from being able to say any complicated thoughts. So if it's simple, if it's easy to say, they'll, they'll let me say it. But if it's complicated, which is racist, right? They, these people are racist and sexist, right? So they believe if you're, if you're black, you can't think that well. But if you decide to be gay and you're black, we'll let you think well enough to say whatever you want to say. Like what I just said. So, and now they're stopping me from remembering what I was just talking about. So I can't remember what I just told you guys two seconds ago. Uh, or what I was talking about two seconds ago. Uh, they're saying it's something to do with technology in your body. <laughs> but they're making it impossible for me to think. Um, so, yeah, uh, the technology in your body, they, oh, they, you know, when you call the cops, they'll tell you it's a mental health problem. And then they'll hunt you down. They'll harass you. They'll, like, sometimes I show up to a place like Walgreens or I show up to a restaurant or I go somewhere and there's usually a cop sitting there or a cop who will follow me on my way to wherever I'm going. Um, uh, yes, like I was pulled over. I've been pulled over like I don't know how many times in the last uh, five years alone since I've been out of prison. I've been pulled out over at least 40, 50, maybe 50 times. And I, uh, the last time I got pulled over was right here, like right, uh, right there. And, uh, I was coming here to go to Walgreens to get, um, something. I forgot. It was late at night or maybe like 15 minutes before Walgreens closed. Uh, they, they pulled, they tried to pull me over here. Well, they did pull me over. And the, the cop told me that the vehicle that I was driving no longer had registered plates, but there were plates on the car. He said the car wasn't registered to anybody. Oh, it was registered to a, oh no, the plates were no good because uh, the plates then, uh, some, my sister had erased the plates. So uh, while I was driving the vehicle, my sister went to the DMV and had the plates changed out uh, to her name because uh, legal, uh, legally the car was my grandmother's, but because uh, my sister, uh, because she died. My grandmother died, apparently. I don't know for a fact. I didn't go to the funeral. Uh, uh, she could, uh, and she went to the DMV. She changed the title to her name. So she wrote on the paper that the car belonged to her, uh, and she wrote, and she changed the plate. So I was driving from, I, I came from uh, home, and I drove this way, and the cop pulled me over. So the cop followed me down University Avenue, and right before I got to Walgreens, right here, he pulled me over on this corner and he told me that the plates were no good, which I, I couldn't imagine why. I was like, I registered the plates. I have a registration right here. Uh, the I have insurance. I have registration. I have a clean license. Why did you pull me over? And he said, somebody changed the plates. So these plates in this car are no longer worth anything. They're, they don't have any value. They don't, they don't, there's no name attached to these plates. Um, so my sister went to the DMV, registered the car in her name, got a new title, and got new plates for the vehicle while I still had the vehicle. So while I was pulled over, the cop was like, I think he was gay. I'm almost positive this dude was gay, but I'm not sure. Um, the dude acted like he wanted to shoot me. Like if I had acted like I had anything, had a weapon, had any type of gun or if I acted any type of way, the dude acted like he was going to reach for his gun and shoot me. It was late at night. It was like 9, 5, 45, 15 minutes before this place closed. And the dude acted like he was going to shoot me um, because the plates are bad. I guess it's like a felony stop, right? They assume that if the plates don't come back unregistered, that the person in the vehicle is a felon, right? That's what we see on the news, right? Bad guys driving around and cars uh, with bad plates, or no plates, or uh, no tags. So the cop must have assumed that he was, uh, which, I mean, it's Middleton. Dude, there's nobody driving around Middleton with um, in a Prius. It was a 2005 Prius. So there should, should not have been a reason for him to act hostile. You know, it was a clean Prius. It was no damage to the car. It was a... Uh, 
uh, in good condition. And I don't, I don't dress like a criminal. I don't come off like a criminal. And I didn't talk to the cop like a criminal. Um, and uh, uh, I showed him the registration. I showed him everything that he needed to see, that the registration was still good. Um, that the uh, the registration was still on the car was still good. So he had no reason to act like at that point when he started doing that, to act like I was going to hurt him in any way. He had to understand that somebody tried to somebody did take the plates off the car by another means, and it had nothing to do with me. So I had clean license, clean registration, clean vehicle, uh, and insurance on the car. And he still acted like he was going to shoot me. So it was like the police intimidation. They're telling me, we will kill you. We're trying to kill you. Or we will find an excuse to kill you uh, if you refuse to be gay. If you continue to refuse to be gay. And that's what these people have been talking to me about. Talking to me in my ears at all times. They're trying to tell me that if you continue to refuse to be gay, we will find a way to kill you. Um, like by pulling you over for plates. Bad plates that had nothing to do with you. Um, so your sister, my sister's gay, right? So my sister's incredibly gay and she's been trying to have sex with me since I was a little boy. Because in the gay community, if you have sex with your siblings, it will uh, it will help you, uh, it will increase, you know, you, you, it's like a socialism, gay socialism. So the more things you do in the gay community that are gay, like, having sex with your father, your mother, your grandmother, your uncles, your cousins, your sister, like kissing cousins and stuff, having sex with your having sex with your cousins and and having sex with your your family members is uh, a way that people people in the gay community increase their value like it's like um prove proving that you're gay. So the more that you prove you're gay by doing things that like having sex with the same sex or having sex with a woman it's okay. That's what we know the gay community as now. But they're telling me that there's more to the gay community. That you can be more than you can have sex with more than just the same sex. You can have sex with your family members, your mothers, your fathers, your uncles, your cousins, and uh, that's the uh, that's that's how you prove yourself. And my sister has been trying to prove herself in the gay community by trying to have sex with me constantly. Uh, so she or trying to have me killed so by pulling me over in the middle of the night uh when and trying to act like you would kill me if i had a gun or if i moved too quickly if i uh, or you imagined that i had a gun you know what i mean like uh do you see on the news cops accidentally shoot people and they call it manslaughter or cops actually accidentally kill somebody um kill somebody on the news and they get away with it. They get like two or three years in prison. So that guy pulled me over and acted like it was going to be, it was all okay, right? It was all going to be okay. Uh, I mean, for him, it's all going to be okay for him if he shot me for something he believed to be a gun, right? Or it looked like a gun or, or something like that. It, you, you, you don't believe it. It can happen to somebody you know. But it does, and that's when people say that on the news. Like, I, I didn't think this would happen to him or, or something like that, but it happens to people, and they do tell people. People do tell people that they're being harassed or intimidated by police officers, but no one ever, no one does anything because there's nothing anybody can do. So, like I was saying, I'm sorry, my sister tried to have that happen to me or tried to tell me that she could have that happen to me uh, by changing the plates in the car and then uh, having, in like two days before I went to court for this problem, uh, before she sent me a lawsuit, uh, she had to, she used the police officers to, uh, to pull me over. Um, I hadn't been pulled over by a police officer in that vehicle for any reason, uh, uh, for lights, for bad plates since I got the car. I had the car for like two years. And I never had an issue with the the, late, the the plates or never was pulled over by a police officer for bad plates until my sister went to the DMV and had the plates changed. So unless these cops are con not never following me, which isn't true. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's not true. So I got pulled over in that car for a bad headlight uh, on my way from Milwaukee to uh, uh, Madison. 
and a uh, cop pulled me over uh, in the Prius. He wrote me a ticket. No, he, he wrote me a warrant. He gave me, he said, just get your lights fixed. Um, but on, on that same day, like hours before, I got pulled over from Madison to Milwaukee for not wearing my seatbelt. Uh, so on the way to Milwaukee, I was followed by police officers and on the way from Milwaukee, I was also followed by police officers, uh, and pulled over twice. So on that day, on that car, I did get pulled over, but I had insurance. I had a clean plates. I had a clean license. Uh, and then I also got pulled over right here, uh, by police officers. Um, uh, and, uh, this, that time that dude tried to kill me. Uh, he, he acted like he, he was going to reach for his gun a few times. Uh, and he me like angry. He had an angry gesture, angry facial gesture as he uh, checked my um, my VIN number on the car to make sure that the car was uh, the car that was in question uh, that he pulled. The car was the one he was supposed to pull over. I don't know. Some stupid. But yeah, so basically my sister is trying to get me to be gay by uh, doing messed up things to me. Oh, and trying to get, also trying to get me to keep that car and uh, not give it back to her. Because like I said, I had it for two years. I had that Prius for two years and um, uh, she uh, she took it away after my grandmother, well, my grandmother died and then I had the car for like two years after my grandmother died. Um, I never believed, I never thought the car was mine. I knew it belonged to somebody, but I didn't know it belonged, I, I, had, I didn't know who, right? But, um, uh, so in the state of Wisconsin, when you die, your stuff goes to your the, your children. Any of your stuff goes to your children, and then it goes to your family members. And if there's no family members, you you it goes to the public. So my grandmother's car supposedly went to her daughter and her son, and I guess they decided to give it to my sister. Uh, so she uh, filed a lawsuit without telling me that she. Uh, she was going to try to repossess the vehicle <laughs> and she uh and she uh uh um and she knew my grandmother gave the car to me so well wanted me to have the vehicle uh to use uh for work to go back and forth to work and uh so she sued me anyways and she um she decided to uh uh, she sued me for the vehicle because my grandmother legally gave it to me. So since my grandmother handed the keys to me and gave me possession of the vehicle, she couldn't claim that I stole the car. But she could claim that she could ask for it in court. You know what I mean? So so it's like um, if you die, you give your car to somebody. It's not theft. You gave them the vehicle. But when you die, your stuff goes to your children. So your children have to go to court to repossess that stuff unless you gave the car to that person legally. It was crazy. So I learned that in court. So I learned just because my grandmother gave me the car to use, it doesn't belong to me. But I knew that. I knew it didn't belong to me. I didn't know how to ask for permission to own the vehicle. So I guess the process would have been for me to go to court, sue my grandmother's estate, I, and... Uh, and ask for permission through a court, through like the local and small claims. Go to small claims and ask for permission to possess the vehicle. And they would have just told me I had to go ask her children and her uh, if I could have it. So yeah, uh, I never, I never knew that's the process. I didn't learn that was the process until after my sister sued me and I found out there's a law in the state of Wisconsin that your stuff goes to your children uh, when you die. Um, so yeah, so my sister took possession of the vehicle, but that experience I had right here, right at this corner, right at this stop, right at, at this spot that where someone, a police officer acted like he was going to shoot me, uh, was a sign that I was supposed to be gay or we will take this opportunity to kill you, um, or take in opportunity to kill you. Like, uh, for... If we catch you or we think you're suspicious, in any moment where we think you're suspicious, we'll, we'll ask, stop you, ask you questions, violate your rights, or make you feel like your rights are violated. And hopefully at that time you, you, um, you fight back or you disobey an order and we can arrest you or attempt to arrest you, hold you down. And with this technology in your body that we can squeeze your chest. I mean, they have technology in people's bodies now where they can make it hard for you to breathe 
right? So our body works with muscles, right? Electrical signals. And if you use technology, you can you can stop those electrical signals from and uh, or squeeze your muscle. Like, I don't know if you guys ever learned this, but I used to know, I, I learned a long time ago that back in like the 1600s and 1500s, people used to experiment with bodies, right? And then like in the 1800s and the ni- uh, 1800s, they used to like electrocute dead bodies, right? They used to play with dead bodies, like dissect human bodies. And I know that if you electrocute a muscle in our bodies, like if you electrocute somebody, a dead person's fingers, they'll, it'll stand erect or it'll, it'll move. You can move somebody's dead body. And these people figured out a way to al- put technology in a live person's body to electrocute their hands and make their hands move if they want them to, they, or to squeeze their lungs, right? You can... Uh, squeeze somebody's lungs and they can't it's hard for them to breathe like right now it's really hard for me to breathe they're using this technology to squeeze my chest and um make it really hard for me to breathe right now uh and uh uh so it's this technology is cap- they're capable of using this to uh like it, it, like during it, if you get arrested and they these cops like to put you in like on the ground and put their chest the knees in your back but when they do that, it makes it hard for you to breathe. And with this technology, they can make sure that you die. You, it's, it's so hard for you to breathe that you die, that you suffocate. And they, the excuse in court and the excuse they use in the courtroom is to say that you died because the officer's knee was on your back, not because uh, there's technology in your body that suffocated you, to, that can make it hard, so hard for you to breathe or stop you from breathing and uh, that's what they're telling me they're telling me that someday somehow or right now we're looking for an opportunity to have you arrested they're telling me right now that they're looking for a chance for some reason to have me arrested they're trying to get me to do something bad so that I get arrested and uh, they'll have a chance to put their put me in a in, in handcuffs and uh and they can use this technology to suffocate me um and these people these officers aren't just regular officers they're gay officers they're they're people in the gay community who go to work as police officers right they put on police uniform and they go out in the streets and they act like cops but these dudes are really gay like they're they're like gay dudes like every everyday gay dudes Right, but they 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 happen to be police officers, and they use their they they act like cops, but they intimidate and harass people who refuse to be gay. They uh they and 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 they take and if there's a chance, they they use their ability, they use that power to kill people uh, who refuse to be gay. And I, I know it seems like you, they call it manslaughter, they call it murder, in the news. Uh, they say this cop was uh, convicted of manslaughter. The cop was convicted of murder. Uh, or this cop was fired for harassing, intimidating somebody. But they don't tell you that these cops are gay. And that the victims, the people they harassed or, or hurt, were uh, people who weren't gay. And uh, uh, I know you probably, you, you, you gotta, you, you, it's hard to believe, right? You can't imagine that that's the reason that we hear or see things on the news uh, within that nobody is ever, never, nobody's ever said anything like that, right? You never heard anything like that. But I'm pretty sure no one is telling people that these cops are killing people because they refuse to be gay. I'm, I'm positive. I'm, I'm positive that no one is, uh, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, like there's a there's the gay community is killing certain people, right? They pick people out, pick uh, dudes out in the news. Like uh, it's not every guy, it's not every kid, it's not every black guy, um, but it's the, a few of the ones that refuse to be gay, right? They 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 uh, they get an attraction. So this dude named Todd Hall used to be my big brother and big sister uh, from Big Brothers and Big Sisters. He was my big brother. He. And he just told me like a few years ago, like two years ago, he was gay. I mean, really, really gay. And since the moment he met me when I was eight years old, he was trying to get me to be gay like him. He was, he's a, he was a, like a pedophile, 
gay trainer. Like, um, you raise little gay boys, boys into gay men, you know? You turn a little boy into a gay male adult. And that was his job, I guess. And since he has a crush on me or he has social, gay social pressure to get me to be gay, he's been trying to, uh, he's been doing bad things, uh, harassing me, um, using people in the gay community to do it. Uh, so he has to have sex with me because he wants to, he wants to continue to rise in the gay community. He wants to continue to, uh, uh, he was supposed to have sex with me when I was a kid, like when I was like an eight year old boy. And he, he wanted to do that. Uh, uh, he wanted, he's been wanting to have sex with me since I was a little kid. Uh, he's always cuddling with me, holding me close to him. Um, tucking me in as, uh, to sleep, to, to bed. Uh, you know, I sleep over at his house and he'd come in wherever I was sleeping and try to tuck me in, uh, and a smile in my face and get really close. And now he's telling me years later that he, he's gay and he was doing all that stuff because he was gay and he was trying to get me to be gay and have sex with him. Uh, but yeah, so, no, so this, uh, so but the, these gay people, <laughs> I'm sorry. So when a gay dude has a crush on you, right? He uses his gay friends to help him, um, uh, harass you, right? He uses his, uh, like people in the area in the near closest to you to harass you. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be him. It could be anyone who's gay and and nearby you you know what i mean so the gay community isn't just in 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 on the east coast of america it's on it's it's across the country so anywhere you go you can use uh other people in the gay community to terror to intimidate harass and harass you he can use police officers he can use lawyers he can use prosecutors he can use a judge he can use a a the, the the manager at Walgreens who happens to be gay, uh, or the employee at Walgreens who happens to be gay, or somebody who's walking down the sidewalk who also happens to be gay, uh, to harass you and intimidate you, or bend over while you're while they're like stop in the middle of the sidewalk, bend over, uh, some dude. <laughs> Some dude, when I when I used to, you, I used to walk down the street and I just walk look somewhere and see some dude bending over and uh, uh, in my direction. So his butt will be pointed directly in my direction, and uh, he'll act like it's okay, you know. But it's like it's like uh, commu uh, gay harassment. And I, I know this dude's asking me if I'm okay, but. Uh, there's nothing you have to ask me about. Uh, it's, that's a that's like a mental health question, right? It's like, is your mental health okay? And it, you must be you you would have to be gay to be asking me that because uh, most people assume that when someone tells them that a gay dude is trying to have sex with them, they usually mean that that a gay dude is trying to have sex with them. And it's not a mental health question. It's not like I'm okay. Are you doing okay? It's not a. It's like, well, what 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 can we do? Uh, what are you going to, wait, what's the question I would ask? I would tell them, call the cops. I would tell them, um, tell that dude to leave you alone. So your question is out of place. The question is, the real question has to be, well, what, what's, what have you done? What, what can you do? Or can I help? Or no, not can I help? Or what, I don't know what the question would be to this. I, I've called everybody and told them what's happening to me. I've made several police reports. And they call it a mental health problem, but that's not that's not true. It's technology. There are, there is technology in certain people's bodies, and the police officers, instead of reporting it, choose to call it a. I mean, uh, instead of having a means to do something about it, they call it a mental health problem. They call it a uh, a. They they're calling it. They. I don't know the, how to describe it. What what was I saying? So instead of being able to report it, people call it a mental health problem and they, uh, it's, they're using technology on me to keep me from being able to do a, can finish this thought. <clears throat> so yeah, so this, the, these, uh, police officers, when you, well, the police department, you dial, 
you write a police report or you dial 911 and these people will just tell you you're having a mental health crisis. Uh, and they call it like schiz uh, dementia, schizophrenia, memory loss. And they, they use normal phrases for this, but technology can cause you to have a memory loss. It can, uh, schizophrenia is just hearing voices, right? But you, you put, a, you put the, your cell phone speaker in your ear and it's all the same, right? And you, or you put uh, a cell phone speaker in somebody's ear, like an earpiece, but make sure they can't take it out it's all the same as uh, like uh, it's like a cover it's like a way to cover up uh, the technology you put in somebody's body by saying they have a mental health problem so when you hear in the news that somebody has schizophrenia if you hear in the news that somebody uh, was uh, lost somewhere like Dwayne Haskins on the on the highway or something like that this he probably did not want to be gay anymore and they used this technology on him to make him lose his uh, place have memory loss um uh to uh uh lose track of himself um or any other news media like anytime you hear somebody with mental health problems in the news it's technology there's technology in their bodies and somebody's using it on them somebody with a crush right so back to what i was saying so todd hall has this crush on me somebody put technology in my body and to make it possible for him to convince me to be gay, right? Um, so they're telling me, like, if I had sex with Todd Hall, they would grow my penis with this technology as well. Uh, like, so the more anal sex you have, like I said earlier, so if Todd Hall has sex with me, uh, he would they'll <laughs> grow my penis uh, with, using their technology. And I know you can't imagine who would come up with this besides a, a gay person, somebody in the gay community, right? To encourage dudes to have sex with dudes. And if they say if you grow, when you grow, when they grow your penis, women are more likely to have sex with you because you have a bigger penis. And that's what the gay community has done. They, they've encouraged boys to be gay so that they can have sex with women. And, every, and they think by doing that it, everybody's happy but but there are people who refuse to be gay there are, there are guys who do not want to have sex with other guys so they, they beat that by uh, putting the technology in the person's body to terrorize them so if you can electrocute them you can cause memory loss you can cause um, you can make it hard for them to think you can, you can move their, their hands if, if you want to you can electrocute them from the inside. You can talk to them day and night. You can terrorize them whenever you want. And this, using this technology, no one, and nobody would know. Nobody could stop you because these people couldn't call anybody to ask for help. There's no way to believe them. Who would believe that somebody found a way to put technology inside somebody's body while they were alive, while they were living? And this, these people who who did this are very smart very very uh rich and in the gay community so because i mean who there's no one else who would do this there's no one else there's no other purpose to put technology in somebody's genitals or uh anus to encourage them to have sex with men and uh todd hall is uh uh, been trying to have sex with me since I was a little kid uh, and uh, he's uh, he's in the um, he's uh, uh, a gay he's in the gay community but he hides it he hides it I, I, I know people you guys who are watching know this right gay so there's some guys in the our community who hide the fact that they're gay from other people and Todd Hall for like 20 years I hid the fact that he was gay uh, from me, but um, uh, uh, I, I kind of knew he was gay, but I had no proof, right? I never had any proof that Todd Hall was gay. I never had any proof. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you can suspect, right? I, I've been around enough gay people who have been openly gay guys who have been trying to have sex with me, right? Like just say, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, like, but do it in a gay manner, or 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 uh, to know that there are 
And I also know, I'm sorry, that's happened enough. And I also know that they're due to hide the fact that they're gay. And, uh, and Todd Hall is one of those dudes. Uh, or he told me he was. So, um, um, what else is going on? So Todd Hall has been trying to have sex with me. He's been using cops and my sister and my grandmother to harass me. Uh, or try to get me to be gay. So... Yeah, so yeah, my family, back to my family. So my grandmother, right, is uh is is was is really gay. Like she's uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it, it, somebody's laughing. Uh you got a lot of gay people in your life. Uh but yeah, my grandmother is gay, right? So she didn't tell me. She didn't she never told me that she was a woman who believed she was a man. But I, I could I should have known, right? I look back and I, I see times where she acted like a, a dude. Right. She wore the clothes of a dude or she she acted really big, you know, like a man would. She thought she was a man of the house. She always believed she was the uh, man of the house. Uh, so she, she stayed like a she lived like a single woman. Uh, but she was a she was a lesbian. She liked girls and little and children. My grandma grandmother liked little girls and little boys and grown women. That, that was what she, those are the people she liked to have sex with. Um, and she wanted me to be the same way. She wanted to teach me to like little boys, little girls, and to have sex with dudes. Though. So I had to be a girl um, uh, just like, uh, uh, like her or act like a, a girl like her. And while she acted like a, a man. Uh, so... While I was growing up, she was raising me to be gay. She was trying to teach me to have sex with, with boys. And uh, so she would take me to houses, uh, her girlfriend's houses in the gay community. So these places where she grew up and uh, places where she knew the, the people there were gay as well. Like the houses of uh, um, other lesbians or gay men in the community. So... I would go to these houses and there would be like some little boy there who was who who had already decided to be gay and she would uh she would try to have uh she would try to have those little boys uh have sex with me. You know, they would act like uh they would act straight and then these little boys would show up and try to have sex with me uh or like sit on the bed with me or get me to sleep over in the same bed with them or pull like pull their penises out and show me their penises and uh, tell me that, and basically trying to teach me that if I choose to be gay, like they'll grow my penis like like 25 years ago when I was just a little kid. So my grandmother was like, oh, L, um, my grandmother was like uh, using intimidation, uh, lack of uh, affection, keeping me from being uh, having any uh, family affection, uh, beating me, like always pulling out weapons like um as uh, uh, uh what did she use like belts uh, bats extension cords uh and and abusing me right so she would beat the hell out of beat me for any reason like for uh being bad at school she would take me home hold me down and beat me and then uh and then she would take me over to some boys some little boy's house and uh who was gay who would try to have sex with me and nobody did anything about it. Nobody, nobody seemed, well, that's not important. They're, the, who, they're telling me what to say. They're trying to get me to say exactly what they want me to say. But these people, this woman used to, uh, <clears throat> this woman, my grandmother used to try to get me to be gay uh, by, yeah, those, in, they're using intimidation, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and uh, uh, socialism. Like she would always embarrass me in front of people. So, she would tell people the bad things I did. She would uh, embarrass me in public. Uh, she used to make me wear clothes that girls wear uh, to school. And she, uh, 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 I don't know, she used to badmouth. She used to tell everybody I was gay. Or anytime I did something gay with a little boy, she used to go around town and tell people that I did. And she acted like, but she never told me she was doing any of this stuff. So she was trying to create a reputation. She was trying to tell everybody I was gay since I was a little, like a little kid. 
and uh that she managed to do it by herself like she managed to make me be gay all by herself so yeah my grandmother did that and uh uh yeah she never told me she was gay but my oh my sister right so so it was me my grandmother and my sister living in a, an apartment well in these houses public housing together and uh my, so, so my sister she chose she chose to grow up as a gay woman so it was it didn't take her no time didn't she didn't try too hard to fight it she she chose to be gay i chose not to be and uh uh my sister was trying to have sex with me the entire time <laughs> Uh, I was in the house. My grandmother didn't really try to have sex with me. She, she used to like try to play with my penis uh, or look at it, tell me that it's okay for her to look at my penis or see my penis when she wanted to or to go in the bathroom when I was using the bathroom to, to bathe me when I was like old enough to bathe myself. Uh, and she used to try to look at my penis and, and, uh, all the time or she wanted me to feel like it was okay for her to do that. Uh, but my sister was trying to have sex with me. She was because I, I think dudes in the community, the gay community or any community feel like if you have sex with your sister, you are a bad like it's, it's clearly a bad thing. That's stupid. So clearly in the community, clearly in our community, like if you have sex with your sister, if you it's a bad thing to do. Right. Nobody's going to say that's OK. But in the gay community, it is OK. Right? These people in the gay community feel like you can have sex with anyone and it's okay as long as you like you like them or people in the uh, in the community say it's okay. Uh so the, since I was a little kid my sister has been trying to have sex with me and uh uh and she's been uh like the person I could go to, right? So when I get bullied, when my grandmother beats me, when I get embarrassed at 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 work or I mean, embarrassed um, as a little boy, you know, or or I feel down, or because I don't have something. My, uh, I guess my sister or some girl doesn't like me, right? So I have a crush on some girl, and uh, they use that to. Uh, so, I'm sorry. So if I had a crush on some girl, and she turned me down, my sister would show up. Or the the idea was that you can have sex with your sister. And, uh, uh, because no one else is going to have sex with you. So, uh, I guess that was the, the idea that these people were trying to, 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 uh, to, uh, teach me. And my sister was willing to, uh, to, to do it because she chose to be gay. She, she was willing to have sex with me because she chose to grow up and be a gay woman. Um, and uh, so I had to constantly deal with my sister trying to have sex with me. And I know some of you who grew up with me know that, that there are times where people believe that something was going on with me and my sister. Uh, I don't know, it, it, like because I danced with her at school. Um, because when I was a little kid, she uh, gave me, uh, uh, she did, she gave me, a, um, she performed like, uh, uh, what's the word? How do you? How do you say this? She 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 had sex with me when I was a kid. So, uh, uh, not vaginally, but in front of her boyfriend, she performed a sex act. I think they're telling me what to say. They're telling me how to say this and get away with it on Facebook, because Facebook has like rules with the language, uh, sexual content. So when I was a kid, that happened. So. Uh, my sister had sex with me in front of her boyfriend. Uh, so when, uh, when I was a little kid, I was at somebody's house on Tree Lane. Uh, his name was Justin Crowell Moat. And, uh, uh, she had sex with me in front of him. And, uh, well, she was performing a sex act on him. And I got up from a couch that I was sitting on, walked over to where they were, which was like a foot away. They, they were having sex with each other like uh, a foot away from me. And I sat on the stairs next to these two people who were having sex and they, and I told my sister to perform the same sex act that was he, she was doing on him, on me, and she did. I mean, she could have told me no, she, he could have stopped her, uh, uh, anything could have happened. But instead they decided to, they decided to have 
they decided she decided to have perform the sex act on me and uh he let her and uh and then i got up i sat down and uh this is the same boy who who uh had sex with me too so her boyfriend who's gay had sex with me as well when i was a little kid i know you're like what are you talking about you're not gay right why are you telling everybody you're not gay so like i said my grandmother groomed me to uh to have sex with dudes when I was a little kid because she told me I had to be gay. Basically, she 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 groomed me or raised me to believe that everybody, every little boy, or at some point in my life, I would have to be gay. So she groomed me to believe that. And she sent men into my apartment. She sent my 18-year-old cousin into my apartment. I was like, when I, I mean, into my bedroom when I was like two years old. And he told me to uh, perform a sex act on him. And uh, I told him to, uh, and I did. So uh, when I was like two or three, and then my grandmother came in the room and she smiled and she looked at me and she asked me, she asked, what are you guys up to? And um, and she smiled at, I came, I got up from under the blankets and she smiled at me and she, she, uh, she said, uh, she said, uh, what are you guys up to? I think I told her I wasn't doing anything or something like that. And she walked out of the bedroom. And then my cousin left the bedroom. But uh, I was like two or three years old. And he was like 19, 19 years old or 20. He was a grown adult. But uh, yeah, so that happened. And then like it just continued after that. Like, uh, I'm sorry. Um, it just continued in, in the same way after that my grandmother just kept con continuously uh continuously tried to uh get gay little gay people to have sex with me gay males to have sex with me since i was a little boy and my sister tried to have sex with me several times as well and she did and uh and uh and that's what happened and and i basically now i'm dealing with cops trying to kill me well looking for an excuse to murder me and, and I think it's just going to be the same news story right that we always hear some cop on the news shot somebody shot some black dude and they they call it uh they call, they're going to call it like um uh re reasonable right they're going to say it was justified a justified killing or a manslaughter charge or a murder charge and it's uh 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 it's uh I don't know, this dude just mouthed something at me and then looked away. But uh, uh, they, they're they going to call it a justifiable killing. And I'm, I'm almost positive that's what they're after because I refuse to be gay. And they're using gay police officers to do it. I mean, I guess they either feel because I, I committed, I had sex with a, a dude when I was a kid, when I was like two, three, five, or six, that, that constitutes... Uh, me being a, a gay dude and if I refuse to be gay then they'll just find a way to kill me because they, they don't want people who are gay to continue to live if they refuse to have sex with gay men and that's what they're teaching me that's what these people have been teaching me since I was uh since I've been uh since I've been here I mean since for the last like I don't know a few years that they've been using this technology to talk to me constantly or walk past me and tell me to be gay when I'm at like like if I walk down the aisles somebody's yelling be gay or you're a sex offender or you're a rapist or oh yeah that's the other lesson they taught me my grandmother taught me so she said that if you refuse to be gay you can be a rapist so uh, because they these gay dudes won't let any girl have sex with you unless you're gay or they'll terrorize her like they're terrorizing you They'll harass her like they harass you. And eventually these dudes, these big gay dudes will show up and act like they're heterosexual and like take your girl from you, basically. Or 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 harass your girl or even rape your girlfriend uh, when she's going home, when she's on her way to work, when she's uh, at school or, or something like that. They'll use these gay dudes who are willing to, who, who refuse to let you have sex with some woman unless you're gay to commit crimes, terrorize your girlfriend, intimidate her, harass her, or do anything that gay dudes like to do. And then these people, even if they go to jail, even if somebody catches them in the act somehow, 
these people will, will go to jail and they don't care. They're gay, right? So they'll have sex with dudes in prison, get out and do it again. And that's what these people are trying to do to me. They're, they're, uh, or my, my grandmother tried to do to me. She tried to turn me into a gay dude who was willing to commit crimes and do anything and uh, just have sex with men for my entire life and then uh, uh, die or get killed or whatever the case may be. But yeah, so when I was a kid, they, they taught me to that I either had I had two choices in life to be to be gay or to have sex with. All right, I got to go. My phone's dying, but uh, I'm going to post this and then uh, start this up later when I when I get going like, uh, when I when I have a chance.